Today's scripture is from the Gospel of Luke. After those days, Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth, conceived, and she remained in seclusion for five months. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and did away with the disgrace that I had been endured with my community. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin who was, who was engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, faithful one. The Lord is with you. But she was quite perplexed by these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and you will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Mary said to the angel, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard this Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she cried out with a loud voice, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this happening to me, that the mother of our Lord has come to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was said to her by the Lord. These are the words of God from long ago told for all the people today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, I mentioned at the top of worship that we are in Advent and in a sermon series called How Does a Weary World Rejoice? In this series, we're exploring stories that happened before Jesus' birth from Luke chapters 1 and 2. In Advent, we wait and we watch, and we hope, and we look forward to the coming of Jesus the Christ in a manger. The first time he comes to be among us, when he makes things right in a particular place in a particular time. And we also wait, and watch, and hope for the coming of Christ forever. The second time when Christ returns, when he will make all things new, and when he will make all all things right. We wait, and we watch, and we hope, and as we do so, we've got all kinds of feelings. This season brings with it a range of emotions. Last week, we talked about our weariness, 
and how important it is to acknowledge our weariness as we wait, how important it is to say it to God, I'm weary, and how important it can be to say it to another person. This week, we'll begin to celebrate the truth that weariness isn't our only option in this life. It's not our only option. Joy is an option too. So we're going to talk about what brings joy, and we'll talk about what joy brings. What brings joy and what joy brings. And as we do, let's pray. Our God, we have gathered here in this time and this place. We've gathered here to hear a word from you, so would you speak through the power of your Holy Spirit? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be holy and acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock, and through Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Y'all remember the Mary Tyler Moore show? Or if you don't, didn't watch it, I'm not going to ask you to tell me who watched it originally and who watched it in reruns. You can get online, get on YouTube, and find the opening credits of the Mary Tyler Moore show. Maybe you remember she goes into the middle of a crowded street in the crosswalk, and what does she do? She throws her hat. She jumps up in the air, and she throws her hat, and on her face is this smile. It's this wonderful smile. When was the last time you felt like that? <laughs> the last time you were in an indescribable, truly good mood, where you wanted to throw your hat in the middle of a crosswalk? I asked myself this question. I will tell you I did not like the answer I gave myself. It has been longer than I would like to admit. What were the circumstances of that truly great mood that you were in? Or if it's been so long that you can't even remember the last time you were in such a good mood, if you had to say what were the circumstances in an ideal world, what would they be? What would, your, what would be on your list? I'll tell you mine. I know that one. <laughs> My house, I remember this time, I don't remember, it was a long time ago, but my house was clean. It was a long time ago, but my house was clean. And I'll tell you, I didn't have to clean it. Somebody else did it, y'all, yay indeed. I had had lunch at our favorite ramen place with my best friend, my husband, he's the one who does our family's cooking. He was making dinner and it smelled delicious. I had gotten most, I will not say all, but most of the stuff done on my work to-do list. You remember how that feels. And I was relaxing with a good book. I had waited a long time for this book at the library. I finally had it in my hot little hands and there it was. And I was reading while listening to my children giggle and play Pokemon. All right. Those were my circumstances. If I had to describe the feeling that I felt in that moment, I would tell you it was joy. Things had gone my way that day. Most of the things in my life had gone according to my hopes and my dreams and my plans. And so what did I feel in response? I felt joy. So much of the time when we describe what joy is, we describe it as a feeling that we have as a result of something. A feeling that we have as a result of something, something we feel because of something that we have acquired or something that we have achieved. We have organized our bookshelf. We've gotten all the junk out of the basement. We win a game. Go crew. We close a deal. We ace the test. We got a promotion. We buy the Tesla. We earn and take that vacation. We get a clean bill of health. We think that joy is something that happens to us. It's an emotion that we experience when we have an experience or when we acquire something or when we accomplish something. Joy is something that happens to us. In other words, joy is circumstantial. It happens to us when the circumstances of our lives and the circumstances of our world line up. And what's better, when joy happens to us, when the circumstances of our life line up, joy banishes all the bad feelings, right? The sadness, the weariness, the frustration, all of them are gone when joy comes into our life. Joy is the only emotion. 
But what happens when the circumstances don't line up? That's another story. What happens when, yet again, we don't clean out the basement? Or when we lose the game, sorry, Cincinnati. Or we don't close the deal, or we fail the test, or somebody else gets to be valedictorian, or somebody else gets the promotion, or we can't afford the Tesla, let alone the vacation, or our bill of health comes back and it's not good. What happens to joy then? Do we experience it then? Let's be real. Let's be real. We're in church. It's okay. <laughs> Human history is not a joy fest. Crack open any history book. Life is not a joy fest. Look at the news. Look down the block. Look in the mirror. We live in a world that has been corrupted by our own selfishness, by the ways that we continually choose our way instead of God's way. We live in a world that is marked by sin, a world that is filled with examples of death and loss. We live in a world whose circumstances overwhelm, so no wonder we're weary, because we are chasing after the feeling of joy that can only come when perfect circumstances line up. And we live in an imperfect world. So where does the joy come? That kind of joy, friends, that's not going to happen to us. That set of stars aligning, perfect circumstances lining right up, that's not going to happen to us this side of Jesus' return. In Advent, we wait for it. Joy isn't circumstantial. That's happiness. Happiness is circumstance dependent. Happiness comes and goes. It's here one day, gone the next. It comes from experience, from achievements, from acquisitions. It comes and our other emotions go away. Joy is deeper. It's broader. It's wider. It is higher. It's not something that happens to us. It's not something we experience or acquire or accomplish. We don't find it. We don't earn it. We don't buy it. Joy comes from God. It comes from God alone. It is God's gift to us because of who God is and because of what God has done. Joy comes from God. And so joy transcends our circumstances. Joy, it's less of a feeling and it's more of a life posture. It's a way of being and living in the world. It's a decision that we make and that we keep on making. It's an attitude that we choose and we keep on choosing. Joy says, I'm good. I'm good no matter what comes my way because I know who I am. And because I know whose I am, and because I know what comes next. We choose joy day in, day out, moment in, moment out, whatever it is that we're feeling, whatever it is that we're experiencing alongside the joy in that day. Joy is it's less the absence of other emotions and more the emotion we feel alongside everything else, alongside our weariness, there's joy alongside our happiness, joy, alongside our sorrow, alongside our questions, our challenge, alongside all of it, there's joy. We live in joy because of who we are. We are children of God, friends. We are each loved and created and claimed by God's love. We live in joy because of whose we are. We are God's. We belong to God, and because we are and because we do, we're redeemed from our selfishness and our sin, from our death and our loss, from our circumstances, all of it through the power of Jesus' cross. We are redeemed, not sometime in the future, but right now. Set free to live now in ways that love God, in ways that point toward God and his goodness and his grace. We live in joy because of what we hope for. God's promise to make all things new. We live in joy because we know because we know, because we trust, the redemption of the whole world is coming. One day Christ will return and make all things new. And this life, friends, this life is not all there is. It's not all there is. This hurt and this harm, this frustration, this challenge, this confusion that we experience it, Christ will redeem all of it. And so we can have a future hope. And nothing, nothing, no one can take that hope away from us. No circumstance, no feeling, no emotion, no event. Nothing can take that away from us. This is the promise that we see over and over in Scripture time and again. Joy because of who we are. 
joy because of whose we are, and joy because of what we hope for. Joy because we are connected to God at our core. We're connected to God so we can live in God's love. We're connected to God so we can say thank you to God for God's care. We're connected to God so we can trust in God's promises. Connection to God is what brings joy. And it's the only joy that will last. But can we be honest? Because we're in church. Can we tell the truth and can we say it's tough? It's really tough to live in a joy that transcends circumstance. It's tough to hear the words, just choose joy. Sometimes joy feels impossibly out of reach. Might not be tough to decide on joy, but it sure is tough to keep on deciding. It might not be tough to choose it, but it might be tough to keep on choosing it. Sometimes it's even tough to give voice to our weariness Sometimes it's really tough to say and actually mean, I'm good. It's tough to mean it. No matter what comes my way, I'll be all right. Our circumstances are not the source of our joy. That's God. But what our circumstances sure can do is make it tough for us to see the joy that is ours. It can be really easy to lose sight of our joy. Maybe that has happened to you. Maybe that's part of your story, part of what you're bringing into this season of your life part of what you're bringing into this space today. I was on Facebook as I am uh, most days. Uh, The other day I was uh, looking around, scrolling through my reels, and I saw a story about a guy who got a metal detector as a hobby when he retired. Do any of you have that dream? Metal detector dream. (laughs) Um, He made a video about all the stuff that he had found. He had found like a bunch of jewelry on a beach somewhere. And what his hope was is that he could return the rings to their original owners. He had uncovered a bunch of jewelry, a bunch of rings, and he took a picture and put out the video and hoped that through the magic of the internet, uh, they would find their way back to who had originally claimed them. What I think is so cool about metal detecting is that it discovers something that's already there right? So that treasure has been lost, and now it gets to be found, and hopefully it gets to be given back to the original owners. And I think about joy like that. Sometimes joy gets buried, like a ring under sand. The joy is still there. It always has been, and it will be until it gets found, but sometimes it gets covered up. Joy can get buried, And sometimes what we need, friends, what you and I need is help unburying our joy. We need help discovering our joy. We need, in other words, reminders. We need reminders to help unbury the joy, just like metal detectors. Reminders aren't their source of the joy. That's God. But maybe what reminders do is uncover or maybe even point to the joy that is already ours that we've already been given. Maybe the reminder says to us and helps us to say, oh, there it is. I see it now. There's the joy. There's God. I had a hard time seeing. I had a hard time remembering. Sometimes the reminders come from the world around us. Have you ever gone outside and just seen the beauty of the creation, taken a walk somewhere? Oh my goodness, what does that do for you? It's the best reminder of the joy that is already ours in the created order. Sometimes we need reminders from one another, and that, that's what I see happening in this story between Mary and Elizabeth. I don't know about you, I have read this story more times than I can count, and it was in the reading of it this time that I thought about something new. These two women help one another to unbury their joy. They unbury one another's joy. They, they remind one another of joy. They find joy in connection. Look at Elizabeth. She is past her childbearing years. She has waited a long time. She's finally pregnant. And yet, did you notice where she is at the beginning of this story? She's in seclusion. What a word. She's waited a long time, and yet here she is away from others. And I wonder, you know, Scripture doesn't say, but it's okay to get curious about Scripture sometimes. I wonder if maybe the circumstances of her pregnancy were too difficult to explain to others, and so she would just rather be by herself. Look at Mary. She's not yet married. 
She's newly pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. She has received a promise of God, of how God is going to change the world through her. She goes to Elizabeth, and notice these two women, they are both incredibly aware of the things that God has done for them. We see them say it out loud in Scripture a few times. But this is what I noticed for the first time. Their joy doesn't get mentioned in the Scripture until they are together. Elizabeth knows. She knows that God has done something great in her and will do something great through her. And yet the child in her womb leaps for joy only when she hears Mary's greeting to her. Mary knows that God has done something great in her and will do something great through her. And yet she only sings a song for joy that happens in a couple weeks. We'll hear about that story. She sings a song for joy when Elizabeth points out to Mary her blessing and her favor before God. There is joy that gets uncovered when they are together. I hope that you have had an experience of someone, and if it's not a someone, I hope it's a someplace, and if it's not a someplace, I hope it's a something that helps you uncover joy. I shared a story with you last week about a time when I was incredibly weary and I voiced my weariness to somebody that I trusted. It was my friend Wade. I worked with him at the church where I was serving before I came here. And what what Wade did for me is he didn't try to fix my weariness. He didn't try to tell me I was being unfaithful or that my weariness was misplaced. And at the end of our conversation, he said to me, this is a little joke that was also very true. He said to me, Jesus is still on the throne, Katie. And I thought, oh, there it is. My joy had gotten buried, and what I needed was help to uncover it. Friends, we get to be for one another metal detectors for joy. When we lose sight of the joy that is ours, when it gets buried, when we can't find it, when we can't see it, what we get to do for one another is point one another back toward the joy that is already ours in God. I will do it for you. Will you do it for me? We can remind one another of who we are, of whose we are, and of what our hope points towards. We can discover again together, pointing toward what's already there. What does joy bring? It brings for each one of us and for all of us the opportunity to remind one another that even when you don't get all the stuff done on the list and even when life doesn't go as expected and even when things don't go our way, there is joy. What are those connections that you have that remind you of that? What are those places or those people or those things that help you to discover or rediscover joy? Who are the someones What are the some places? What are the some things? Make a list. Maybe it's the same list as before, that same list that you would have given me back when I started talking. Same list of circumstances that you would need to experience joy, but maybe you see it just a little bit differently now. If it reminds you of joy in some way, if it helps you to uncover it, I believe it's because in some way, in some shape, in some form, it is pointing you back to God. Our connection to God brings joy, and our joy brings us the chance to help others connect to God. Thanks be to God. Amen.